Hello, Kelly. This is Graham. Graham, how you doing? I'm sorry I'm late. That's okay. No, it's, uh, I was just enjoying a bit of Hey Jude there on the uh, <laughs> uh, waiting music. That was nice. Love it. Well, what a great pleasure to be speaking to you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Yeah, what a year you must be having, having another album out. You know, um, it, it, we've, we've been uh, fortunate to have a nice run of uh, creativity in the last, uh, you know, five, six years and, and made three decent albums. So we're excited about this new one, uh, Don't Let Up. And, you know, we've been playing some songs off of it. We got back from Japan a week ago, and the Japanese like knew all these songs and so we we were really excited to play some of this new music yeah i bet one thing i've noticed actually with your music over the years is that you've kept that lovely positive sound you know the, the big songs from the 80s had just had that positive feel to it and it's kind of continued you know all the way through like an album for example like somewhere in california you had beautiful songs like follow your heart and live for today and now just having an album called Don't Let Up. It really just says it all. You know, um, we we love big choruses, and so that's kind of what we base uh, you know, the writing sessions on, is we try to find that chorus that lifts everything up, you know, and, uh, you know, and find some interesting things to talk about, you know, with, you know, with our lives and personally and stuff like that. So we've been really fortunate to keep tapping into that. Yeah, so uh, has any of... Or has there been any changes within that over the years? You know, you said it, you tap into some personal experiences. I guess I can branch out into another question because, you know, obviously throughout our lives we have ups and downs. But, uh, you know, obviously through this music, you've really, it's clear you've definitely kept a positive outlook. Well, I mean, I think that, I think that that's kind of the, the whole thing is that music should, you know, not only make you think about stuff, you know, but it should, it should make you feel good too, I think. And, and that's what, we've always tried to do within the band. But the interesting thing is about the last three records is that the whole process has been different. You know, we decided to just come into the session, the writing sessions, and just kind of have a clean slate and not have pre-written songs so much. And just to explore the creativity of the three of us getting in a room together and just kind of jamming and, or playing a groove and, Somebody starts this, and then you go, oh, that would be a good chorus, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And just riding that kind of wave of creativity. We've never really done that. And this, the last three records, that's the process we've been doing, and it just it has been so um, kind of fresh for us and a new, new perspective, and it comes out being very positive. Oh, that's a great idea. So th that's a good way of keeping it fresh after, you know, doing it for so many years and uh did you find that uh, there's just changes in how you've done it before in different albums yeah yeah i mean i mean usually you know we'd all come in with, with song ideas and, and of course that would help the process but um you know the further we got into this the, you know, the more we needed kind of like a a different a different way of doing it you know and so that's when we started to just get in the room without any songs per se you know anything written you know um, and um, and just just come up with stuff. Yeah, and it's and it's served as well. Yeah, so in that spontaneity, there could be something different that can come through. It's a great way to spark uh, a new direction. Yeah, because I guess something that's been a bit more considered and prepared. I guess there's something within that as well. You know, I've spoken to artists and musicians who they uh, perhaps delve into a bit more you know, darker material or, you know, a bit more emotional. And for them, you know, even though they're staying within those, that kind of darker frequency, at least they're able to uh, get some sort of cathartic process out of it. But from your perspective, you know, when you're just reaching for that higher, lighter sort of positive vibe, is, is there something still that you're able to uh, dig into with your experiences that you're able to, you know, just share and just by sharing and getting it out, it's changed something within you. It does, and it kind of makes you think about where you're at, in you know, at, at this point in your life, and, and you know, it's like we we've, we've been around for 35 years, and we're trying to, you know, every album we try to, you know, write something new or you know something different for us, and you know, and sometimes it's kind of hard to to get into it because after making all these albums, you know, what do you find uh, what do you find interesting to write about, and so you know that's 
the, the, having a clean slate and coming into the, the whole session with not any preconceived ideas, you know, it's been a real, real uh, blessing. Yeah, I bet. But I guess as well that over the years, we still do different things, different things happen to us. And so there's still things that are fresh that we can uh, talk about and f express and feel. So uh, yeah, I guess you can almost categorize or uh, write about your life story or, you know, not like literally or in expressing everything personal, but I mean, like, you know, over the years, you're able, you have this platform to be able to share so much. I mean, you know, uh, you know, going through life, you know, there's so many different aspects of, of life, and, and there's so many interesting things that happen to us daily, you know, so, and maybe not all of them are, are something to write about, but, um, but I just think that if you, if you look at, you know, look from yourself and you look out, then you'll find things. We always try and be as positive as possible. I mean, the, the darker side it, uh, hasn't really um, been something that we've wanted to explore, just because I feel like there's so much negativity going on in the, in the world in the past few years. <laughs> yeah. That, you know, I wouldn't want to write about that. So I think that music has to lift people up, and I think that's what we, that's what we strive for. Yeah, it it's definitely sounds like it. But have there been other changes you've been noticing? Like, for example, when you play live, how has that sort of changed over the years? It's gotten better. Yeah? I think that we, as people, have, have just gotten, you know, to the point of where we really enjoy playing with each other, and we allow each other to, to have these moments of spontaneity on stage and, and embrace so it's one of those kind of things is like when you when you've been playing together so long you just you just kind of go with it you know sometimes we end songs differently yeah sometimes we'll just uh, throw a cover in you know or things so at this point we want to be have fun on stage and we want to bring the audience in on that too we don't want that want it to go over their heads yeah exactly a lot of times you know I don't want to get too complicated or too too negative. So, I mean, that's kind of the way we look at it. It's an entertainment. And it's supposed to be like a, a time away from reality. Yeah, that's a good point. And also, there's a you can bring that element of the positivity we talked about in the uh, songs you write. And on a, in a live stage, it makes it even all the better than you're also sharing with the audience. So you get that wonderful shared experience where they're they're uh, just loving it and feeding back to you how much they're enjoying it. And so you have that wonderful cycle of energy. Exactly. Like just coming back from Japan, I just mentioned, you know, it was such a joy to play for them because, you know, not only the old songs, but the new songs, they had listened to the albums. And I mean, it was just, we just had the best time with the Japanese audience. Great. Ah, wonderful. Uh, because, yeah, they're so enthusiastic as well, and uh, they give so much. They do, absolutely. So what changes have you been noticing in the music scene over the years? Because uh, just looking back to when you started out, uh, I spoke to one of my friends, Vince, that uh, I'd be speaking to you, and he, you know, he, he was from America, and uh, he remembered when he was a kid seeing you support Black Sabbath. And uh, that was a very interesting time in music, especially rock, like that in the, into the 80s. And you had all these big bands such as Black Sabbath. And then, you know, then you were able to uh, contribute to the sort of change in, in style and rock in the 80s as well. And to be part of that and then see what, you know, what, what changes have happened since and all the different genres that have come and gone. It must be, it must be very interesting to be able to have lived through that and experienced each different stage. It's amazing. I mean, I was just talking to somebody about you know, the influences that I had. And I, I thought it was so interesting that, that um, you know, like one of my favorite bands, and, you know, Jimi Hendrix Experience, they had all this jazz influence. Yeah. You know, so that was like the first time I was like, like, like heard rock and jazz fused together. And I was like, man, this is, what the heck is going on? <laughs> so, and that made me want to go and check out what, what their influences were, you know? So and then and then finding all the R and B stuff that Hendrix was in, and then Mitch Mitchell, you know him being a jazz drummer, you know, I mean, so it was really cool to see the evolution of music from that, you know, from the '60s, you know, um, hard rock into the music now that's that's, that's pop, it's so creative. Maybe a lot of it's computer generated or whatever, but still, it's like the lyrics and the and the, the style of 
you know, and, and, and the, the way they created it is so incredible. It's so amazing how they structured uh, how they structured the song. You know, it's still it's still the same. It's still great melodies and great lyrics. You know, so it's it's really nice to see a change. Yeah, it's just finding different ways of doing it. And uh, I was going to ask, actually, have you always uh, been a drummer, or did you, when, when you first started when you were younger, did you play different instruments? Well, I've always played a little bit of guitar. That's how I write. So I, I mean, I play acoustic guitar, but yeah, I've always been a drummer out of need. You know, it was like, you know, in the neighborhood where I grew up, everybody was trying to play guitar. And so um, when I came up as a vocalist and a drummer, so I wanted to I wanted to be a singer, you know. So that was the thing. And then I, out of need, I you know I, I started playing drums. I could do both, you know. And um, so that's how things. How did you find that? Uh, like I, I, a drummer and, and a singer. Yeah, I tend to always ask actually when uh, you know I've had friends bands as well I've seen and the uh, drummer sings. How did you find that? Because from you know an external standpoint of not actually having drummed in a kit it looks like uh yeah just adding to the complexity of it yeah it was, it was kind of interesting because the neighbor across the street from me was learning how to play guitar taking lessons and reading out of a book you know beatles songs and stuff like that so it was like well you know what you know i knew the songs i could sing them but we didn't have a band yet and we didn't really have anything going on but his cousin had a drum set stuff in one of his a closet that he never played, so we took it, took it back to the house, and then I just started to figure out how to do it, you know, and just, just you know, on my own, watching Ringo and watching, you know, different drummers around the neighborhood play, and I just figured it out. But I would, but I learned how to do both of them at the same time, you know, sing and play. So that was kind of kind of an oddball thing. That probably helped actually, because maybe one of the things where if you were learned to drum first. And then maybe adding singing after that could have been maybe added then added to the complexity. I mean, it was it was weird trying to sing written, the different rhythms that you would do vocally in the song, and then trying to play a drum beat in time. It was really really difficult. You know? Yeah, and I know what you mean, but also and I know what you mean about the uh, necessity as well. I've seen that in London to a degree where, again, with like friends bands or on the circuit a little bit, there can sometimes be a shortage of a drummer or say a bassist for example they tend to be the instruments where there aren't as many as such it is always you know the gu- guitarists that are more prevalent right exactly i mean it, it, there's not too many of us around i i, I love the challenge of trying to do both of us. It, it can be it can be really difficult sometimes but i but uh, i love it and and this band gives me all the freedom i need to, to make mistakes and i don't get it beat up about it yeah <laughs> That's great. Because, yeah, I mean, I don't normally ask uh, musicians who their influences are, but in your case, I guess, yeah, there must be also so many that you have influenced over the years. And also one of the great things about rock and metal is, uh, you know, despite what we're saying, that there have been some amazing drummers over the years in, you know, in rock and metal. So, uh, yeah, to, to be part of that as well. I mean, have there been any influences of you on you or over the years seen, you know, some drummers that have blown you away? Well, I mean, there was, there was three of them that, that influenced me back in the day. And of course, the first one, when I was listening to a live rock track on the radio, was Ringo singing, you know, Boy, back in 1964 from the Heart of the Bowl. And then shortly, and, and then a few years after that, it was, you know, Don Henley. And th- there was this band called Rare Earth that the drummer was the lead singer in the band. And... He was a real, really soulful drummer too. So I kind of learned, kind of learned like, like, oh man, this is a little bit more R and B blues, you know. So then I started to search into that and see what I could find, and, and I latched on to the blues for a while, and, and definitely like Motown. So um, those have been the three drummers that I that I've latched on to as a kid. Yeah, and also that's great that they come from like to the different genres as well. And you lived through that time of the, you know, Motown and that those jazz influences as well. That's a, a great impact. And yeah, there's been some great musicians on that side, of course, as well over the years. Definitely, good stuff. I think. 
And, uh, you know, one of the, obviously, <clears throat> the single from the new album, Running Out of Time, again, you've taken that as an expression, which can make people kind of worry a little bit of, oh, yeah, we're running out of time, literally. Or also, I've noticed in your music as well, again, being maybe a little bit back, back to the positivity of, uh, you know, not worrying about regrets. I mean, like Sentimental Street, for example, is obviously based on that. And that's been one of my bugbears over the years. But uh, to kind of not, you know, to, to be in the moment and uh, again that's part of my work as well is to help people come into their bodies and stay present you know I mean it, it's just interesting the whole creative process and how it works sometimes you go backwards you know sometimes it's not about the lyrics yet until you find the right phrase and the right, the right melody and then you're struck by you know a lyric or a situation and, that you want to write about so you know a creativity is it can be um, a, a really great process, or it can be a hard one, you know. But those those battles are worth, it. you know, they're they're worth everything. I think um, w- with with creativity being the whole idea of of how you live your life. I mean, you know, no matter who you are, whether you're whether you're a musician or whether you're a mechanic, there's still something creative involved. All of that you have to, like, make up something, you have to figure something out. And I think that that's, that's the, the human... Um, the human beings uh, uh, are the most amazing uh, creatures because we, we have that ability to be creative, you know, and, and be able to, to uh, you know, capitalize on it, you know? Yeah, and to sometimes keep the creativity flowing, especially over... A sequence of years, you must also have to keep pushing yourself out of your comfort zone as well, which is always always a great source of change as we grow as well. That's correct. That's right. I mean, you know, you know, because if you if you don't change, you know, then and you don't grow, then how is it going to be? Yeah. You know how how is your life going to end up? And so I, I just feel like that we all need to kind of push ourselves to be outside of our, our comfort zone, as you said, you know. Yeah, and so it definitely sounds like you're not running out of time, so you definitely feel like you're going to, you know, keep at it, keep flowing, and just riding this wave of how it's turning out and unfolding for you. Just like a shark, you know, you got to keep moving. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're, you're going to keep touring and then uh, sit down and do you think uh, even another album could be under underway in due course? Sure. Yeah. I mean, definitely not in Night Ranger. We'll probably, you know, uh, work on another album in a couple of years. Probably, probably start working on it in years. You know, I've I've been working on some songs, and you know, I, I've had a couple of solo records, so I, I may do one. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm just trying to be creative, so I never know if I, you know, being doing a solo album is kind of like doesn't really appeal to me, but but I I just want to keep being creative. So, like I said, I've done a couple of them, but I. I I've just been trying to be to stay in that realm of like to keep trying to create new songs and new, new stuff. So that's what I've been doing in my studio lately. What's the uh, difference apart from you know, the obvious uh, familiar, familiarity of the uh, guys you normally work with in a band? But what are the other differences you notice when you work on your own on a solo material? Is it do you have like a space that you can try different things? But as you said, I guess you you're already able to uh, experiment with, with the guys you. You know you're you're with, but uh, yeah. But basically, what are the uh, you know, things you enjoy about or find different with your solo work? I, I enjoy the, the process of writing a song. So I'll go to two or three of the people that I've written, written with in the past, and and just uh, you know, as long as I come in with a, with a strong you know idea or, or a good a melody or good title, you know, then that process will be really good. But with the band, what we've been doing lately. On the last three albums, we've been just going in a room without any pre-written songs or, or ideas, and just, or maybe it'll be a riff, just one riff. But but that's how the process has been the last three albums: is come in with a clean slate and just start from scratch. And that alone, being in a band, really works. Yeah, because you can get in there. We got a rhythm section. We got. You know, we got Brad and myself and Jack. You know, so we got the three-piece, you know, rhythm section. It's all right there, and so that's what we've been doing. Uh, is just going in a room and jamming. 
and jamming on, on, on a couple of ideas that somebody maybe just came up with or something. And so that works there when you're when you're doing a solo thing. You have to make all the decisions. <laughs> uh huh. You know, um, it's nice to have a band when everybody goes, oh, I like this, I like that. But when you're by yourself and, and, and it's just you and the songwriter, you know that can be a little bit, uh, a little, a little weird. Yeah, but you can then also. It reminds me of uh, singer songwriters who, I guess, because they're on their own, everything is kind of paired to the bone a little bit, and it can be really personal. You know, the music that comes out. That's what I love. That's probably probably the, the the most special thing about doing a solo record is that you can do um, things, you know, and and continue to do ten songs that are about what you want to do and what you want to talk about. And so, in that way, it's probably the best part about doing a solo album. Yeah, but then uh, I guess over the years as well, there's just been different changes in your lives, and so you have to have the space, uh, like you said, like you might recorded an album with a band in a year or two so within that time you're playing live you're touring but then also you have to of course as we get older incorporate the family life into into you know our lives basically so that yet then you have, have all these elements as we grow older and have more responsibility has that been uh, something you've been enjoying over the years as well it gets yeah it gets a little more complicated you know with the family and stuff like that but, but um you know, it makes it more interesting too. You know, and then and then you know, you know we get your, your perspective changes. You want to do certain things and you know travel or whatever, and then you know, that just kind of fuels the whole creative process again. Um, but all the touring that we do, we, you know, we we do get a chance to meet a lot of great people and and get a lot of interest. So that really helps all the you know, you know going around the world and, and meeting different cultures and stuff like that. So. We've been really fortunate that way. Yeah, have there been any like memorable moments? I guess there's been so many times you've been around the world, but uh, have there been any kind of moments and places that you've played and landed for the first time, for example, that really stood out? Well, I, I, you know, we just came from Japan, and we always look forward to going over there. That that culture is one of the most indelicate, I think, and really like smart, intelligent, you know, techn- techn- uh, logically advanced society it's just I mean I just think I'm so fascinated by them you know how they do um, even just when you're buying a gift in a store how they wrap things <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's just you know it's just really amazing and then going to Europe and going to, to Germany or Switzerland you know or the UK definitely and the different cultures it just it, it always blows my mind how Things are so different within a small amount of space. Yeah, you know, uh, between cultures, especially in Europe, these countries are so close together, and how things can be so different. Yeah, a few hundred miles away, incredible. Or even across a border, even there's some. It's, it's very complicated. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. But I know what you mean about Japan, actually, because it's funny enough, today I also recorded another interview for a podcast I do for the uh, radio station about mental health. And uh, the chap I spoke to, he um, his wife is Japanese, and they spent some time over there. And, and we we're talking about, you know, being present and mindful, and how, like in Japan, for example, they're really good at almost like in their m- movements and motions with their breath and everything they do is conscious. They're aware of each movement, so it's almost like a flow and a dance with everything they're doing. You know, and the, the communication process with them is so passionate. That's what I love um, about them is that they are so, so emotional and passionate about everything they do. It's just astounding to me. Uh, it's great to uh, enjoy and appreciate. And you reminded me as well, like when you talked about being in Europe and all the places you've been to, obviously the highlights of that is the people that you meet and sp- talk to. And I get a bit uh, worried sometimes about uh, with the technology and the phones, for example, everyone's kind of on their phones and writing by text and they're missing that element of communication without you know hearing someone's voice perhaps or being there with them in live and f- seeing the expressions they do. And like when you're in Italy, for example, you know, they speak with their bodies as well. And so you're missing all these elements now. And so it's great that you've been able to 
travel and see these different cultures and really, you know, experience all these differences. And I just wish that more people were able to do the same. You know, what, what worries me about the, the technology that's in our hand right now is, is the fact that people go to concerts now and they're using their phones to record moments when they should actually be experiencing through their eyes, into their brain, and into their soul. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of worry about that because when you, look at the, when you look at the video later, you're not getting the same feeling. Or at least I don't. Yeah, it's not, it's not good at all, is it? I'm watching it live and realizing that I may not see this moment again. But if you record it on a phone, it doesn't feel the same. That's right. You don't get that same feeling when you watch it on your phone as you, when you're watching it with your eyes. I don't know what that is. It's a human, it's human nature. Yeah. I can't get around it. Yeah, it's some change that's happened for sure. I mean, I remember the days of when, you know, there may have been a ballad or songs you know, everyone is holding up their lighter, but now you see a sea of the screens, which is kind of crazy. Well, and how about the first time you listen to music on it, you know, actually hold the album in front of you, listen to the record, and you would experience it emotionally through, you know, like everything that was coming out of the speakers, and you're staring at the album cover, and you're, and you're just absorbed in it. There's this thing that happens, the connection. And I still happen, absolutely still happen, sonically, when you're, when you're listening, it's going in that way. But when you're still with live music, I think it's really better to just turn your phone off and just watch it you know, and listen and absorb it. Yeah, and still engage with live music and go and see it and support local bands and keep, keep that side of it going as well. Yes, absolutely. Very important. All the new bands coming through, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking sometimes. I'll go, I'll go see gigs in venues in London. There might be small places, you know, the back of a pub or somewhere, and it's not that many people there, really. And, uh, there could, you know, it, there, there's no reason why it shouldn't be more. There shouldn't be more people, like, at the venue and hanging out. And just and, it, and also I've been to gigs where there's actually music playing, like, downstairs, and you can it's free. You can just walk downstairs and see it. But people are upstairs and, you know, hanging out or whatever and kind of missing these opportunities. I know. I mean, that's the good thing about technology is that there's so much now. There's so much content that it's almost hard to keep up with. You know? I mean, there might be a band. You know, I mean, that was the thing in, in the music industry when I first was introduced to the music industry, like working at record companies and stuff. And I would, you know, I would ask them like, how many bands are you selling this year? And, you know, and who are they? And you know, I was so curious. And, they were they were like saying that seventy percent of the bands didn't break out, you know. And I thought, I thought this is a shame that all these bands didn't break out. But now with the technology, these bands have a better chance of being seen and heard. So in that way, that the technology is serving as well. You know, I think it's hard harder and harder to keep up with all the new music that comes out almost daily. That's true. I mean, for a little while, I was, you know, it was a bit worrying that um, bands were finding it difficult to get attention either through a record company. But now, I guess, uh, through, again, creativity, they've been able to find different ways and platforms of getting their music out there. But as you say, there's so much now that it's almost like a noise and to break through and come to people's attention is much more difficult. Yeah, so then, you know, then they have to resort to doing something crazy. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's like it's like uh, more and more I see bands, you know, with, with trying to come up with a gimmick. Not so much lately, but but I think that pop music of today is really cool because it's, I mean, you know, there's there's certain artists like you know, like I don't know, Lady Gaga, or, or you know, just to throw a name out there that that's kind of blown my mind lately is that kind of technology and that kind of music is is really it's super creative. It's, it's been it's been really well thought out, and uh, um, so you know I, I hear musicians, um, older musicians, complaining about the new music, but I think there's some really good stuff out there that, like we were talking about, it's there's there's so much content, it's hard to find the 
the good stuff, you know. But there's one good thing that can come with all of the history of music that's behind us. Because when I speak to young bands now, it's always nice to hear how each member of the band has, has different influences. All three could be from pop or different types of rock or metal or that, you know, somebody might be into jazz. And, and then what they create together could be something new that w- wasn't there before. I just saw a band, um, last time I was watching, it was like a, somebody on Facebook posted this band, and they were doing a Hall & Oates song, Rich Girl, and they had the instrumentation of a stand-up bass, a, a drummer with a snare drum, a lead vocalist, and a trumpet player. <laughs> and it was like, I was blown away how the music sounded. It was incredible. And I and I was like, God, but the, the small amount of instrumentation, the song still was great. You know, the song was still being represented right, and it was still, you know, a trumpet, a stand-up bass, and a and a drummer, and a lead vocalist. And then they were singing backgrounds and oohs and ahs. So there was there was a keyboard or guitar, you know, space. I mean, it was it was pretty great. I. I I didn't, I didn't catch who the, the name of the thing was, but they were great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go check them out. I know what you mean. There's these different... Like, uh, uh, yeah, and you get these little blends as well and using some elements of electronic music into, like, you know, swing and then all these different things that can come through. And, yeah, there's some really nice blends that can be made. Yeah. Well, great, Graham. It's it nice to talk to you. Yeah, you too. Uh, what, a, what a wonderful conversation. Having a stream, somebody that has a stream of consciousness like me. <laughs> yeah, I was really grateful to be able to speak to you. And yeah, especially after enjoying your music when I was young and those wonderful, big, powerful, uh, positive songs and an- anthems. And uh, to be able to speak to you now is just wonderful. So uh, thank you, Kelly. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, sir. It was a nice opportunity to kind of, uh, ex- you know, kind of expand my mind a little bit and talk, you know, have some interesting uh, point of view about, about music, you know. Yeah, that's what you know. I love about having again, you know, real conversations and talking to people, and uh, the chance to speak to, you know, uh, artists such as yourself. So uh, yeah, then just you know, sharing and getting ideas out there. I really enjoy it. Me too, absolutely. Yeah, so keep at it, and can uh, yeah, just enjoy the new material and keep creating, and spreading those positive vibes. We definitely need it at this time. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's uh, one thing that we, that we all need is to have a have a little bit of light in our in our lives, you know, to to uh, to kind of like you know, get us through because you know things are getting weird out there. Man. Yeah. Get get us down. We do it, you know. Yeah, we still have to have optimism and uh, faith in humanity. You know, when we meet people and smile and say hello and have those conversations, they're usually pretty good. So uh, the more that ripples out and beautiful music is spread as well, then uh, I think the more that we'll keep going and get through it. I agree, sir. And I uh, look forward to meeting you. I don't know if I'm going to see you when we play in the UK, or, but um, hopefully uh, we'll meet somewhere down the road. Yeah, I look forward to that. We certainly will. Thanks, Kelly.